hello, hello. Welcome back to the David67 Celtic News YouTube channel. At last, the international break is over and it's time for Celtic to get back to their basic bread and butter in the Scottish uh, Premier League system with today's match against uh, Motherwell, 3 o'clock at Celtic Park. Today's video is going to be a little preview of uh, the game, prediction for score and the lineup, and a little bit of Celtic related news also. So, um, looking at today's game, we're playing Motherwell. Um, last time we played them, um, Luis Palma scored for Celtic late on. Uh, Motherwell equalised just as time was running out, but happily straight from the kickoff, Matt O'Reilly uh, restored Celtic's lead, and we won the game two-one uh, at Motherwell. In uh, the games since that time, Motherwell for the last nine games have had two draws and seven losses, and their form has really dipped quite considerably. Um, Celtic has actually a very good record against Motherwell uh, in recent years. It's eight years since Motherwell actually beat Celtic, not since December 2015. And also Celtic have a run of 29 games unbeaten uh, against Motherwell home and away. And of course Celtic are looking to extend their unbeaten home record to 51 um, which would put them too short of the record of 53 unbeaten home games which was under Martin O'Neill in the early 2000s. Celtic go into uh, the game with a relatively full squad uh, the long-standing uh, injuries to Abada, Maeda and Hatati are the only injuries that appear to be uh, the case for Celtic at the moment. And Louise Palma and Alice Johnston came back from international duty and were back in training yesterday, uh, yesterday at Lennox Town. And also it was very good to see Marco Tilio also taking part fully in training um, after a couple of games for the Australian Olympic team in the Middle East uh, during the international break. I think um, Brendan Rogers will be looking a little bit towards the game against Lazio and resting a couple of players in preparation for that um, and um, also I think it's very very important uh, for Celtic to get uh, Marco Tilio into first team action he um, obviously um, is back to full match fitness um, having had the equivalent of uh, 90 minutes of play in effect in the two Australian games during the international break and as you may have seen from a couple of my Marco Tilio related videos and a couple of Marco Tilio shorts also on the channel I think he is a really good player has tons of the skills that will make him uh, a great player for Celtic a very adaptable player as well able to play on the right, the left, uh, through the middle as a striker and also potentially playing as an attacking midfielder at the head of a diamond formation. Uh, thus, I think it's really important to get him into the squad, um, into the team, um, coming off the bench on a few games over the next couple of weeks. Um, double uh, benefit of getting him uh, integrated into this team, getting his confidence up, getting his teammates getting to know him and also uh, allows us to rest 
a few players um, before and after the Champions League matches over the next uh, few weeks and also very busy um, fixture schedule up to um, the start of 2024 and so I think Celtic do need to use as much of their squad as possible. Other player I think who might get rested at uh, uh, today is Liam Scales, not because of any loss of form, just he has had a very, very busy schedule um, with uh, playing pretty much constantly for Celtic all season, plus having had uh, four international matches as well for the Republic of Ireland, including two in the recent international break. I think also this gives Celtic the chance to bring in Lagabielka or Navrocki to play alongside Carter Vickers, as I think um, starting a partnership between Carter Vickers and Navrocki um, will be Celtic's long-term first-choice option in the centre of defence. So, um, in prediction for the team, uh, assuming that all the injury status and return from uh, international break status is as reported in this morning's uh, press online, I would go with Joe Hart in goals, Alison Johnston at right back, uh, Carter Vickers and Novrocki in centre defence, and Greg Taylor at left back, uh, having um, Laka Bielka and Scales on the bench. This covers uh, right back, left back, and centre back. Uh, as Laka Bielka does double up as a right back. Centre midfield, I would go for Odin Tiago Holm, uh, Kyla McGregor, and Matt O'Reilly. Uh, there are some advocating. David Turnbull, but I don't personally feel he gives enough to the team all around and he is a good player to come off the bench last 10, 15, 20 minutes um, as I think his uh, abilities are much better against tired opposition um, and I don't think he tracks back enough to support the defence, doesn't make himself available for uh, passes and one-twos with his midfield colleagues and his white colleagues. Um, certainly a very useful player uh, for scoring uh, shots from the edge of the box, which obviously couldn't be quite important against the defensive team, as I suspect Motherwell beat will be today. Um, and I do think uh, Odin, Thiago Holm and Paolo Bernardo are very much players of Celtic's future. David Turnbull seems very reluctant to sign a new contract and I fully expect to see him leaving in the, the winter transfer window or um, negotiating a freedom of contract um, move at the end of his contract in May 2024. Up front, um, out wide on the right, we go with Yang. On the left, Louis Palmer. Um, who appears to have got over his minor knock he sustained in the first Honduras versus Mexico match. He played the full 90 minutes uh, against Mexico in the midweek, um, was taken off to bring on an extra defender when Honduras were still on top. In the end, Honduras went out on penalties due to a controversial uh, late, late equaliser for Mexico and a number of odd refereeing decisions for red cards and yellow cards, all of which went against Honduras. And I think, um, given the fact that um, Kyogo has had a quite significant head injury and concussion-type injury, um, I think uh, Celtic will go with O up front as our main striker, uh, with the option of bringing on Kyogo the last 10, 15 minutes or so. Um, to get him his match legs back under him. Uh, I think um, playing Kyogo from the start may be a wee bit risky um, as returning from uh, such head injuries uh, can be quite difficult um, but he did appear to take a uh, pretty much full part in training yesterday from the videos online 
uh, from Lyric Town. In terms of prediction, I don't think Celtic will have any difficulties today with Motherwell. Motherwell missing uh, three players, um, Lennon Miller, Papa Suari and Paul McGinn. Um, and I think Suari and uh, Miller have been among their best players this season. Uh, they no longer have the threat of Kevin Van Veen up front. And so I don't see Motherwell being a threat to Celtic today. So I'm going to go confidently for a 4 nothing victory for Celtic. Um, and that uh, we'll see some game time for Tilio and for Kyogo um, in preparation for the game against Lazio, resting a few of our players late in the game and bringing in some of the squad players uh, late in the game as well to get them a bit more match fitness. Other wee bit, <coughs> oh, excuse me, other wee bit of Celtic Club news um, is that uh, the scouting department seems to be primarily concentrating on Matthias Kiesgarden, a player who nearly came to Celtic in the summer transfer window. He's had a good season for Bronby, um, also carrying on in the Danish under-21 side. Um, he uh, does give Celtic uh, a good option, and I think um, will be a useful player to have in the squad as a backup to Oho and Kyogo, and also taking over from those two, as those two would be expected to be away for a good five or six weeks in the early 2024 for the Asian Cup. Um, Sidney Van Hoydonk doesn't appear to be so much on Celtic's radar. Um, it is a rather complicated um, situation with um, Sidney Van Hoydonk. Um, he's got an excellent record in Dutch football, has struggled in Italian football with Bologna, um, and has had a little bit of game time coming off the bench. Um, there's also a, a bit of complications from his agents and his dad, Pierre, the ex-Celtic player, who has interfered quite often in um, his son's career. And for those with uh, a longer memory like mine, Pierre Van Toydonk was a brilliant striker for Celtic but a complete pain in the backside for the managers uh, he played for. Um, um, left Celtic under pretty bad circumstances, moved to Notts Forest, again, pretty bad circumstances there, um, intended to be a player that caused quite a lot of problems wherever he went. Um, also a player with a massive ego, and that appears to have been his um, career after uh, finishing off football, working as an agent and working as a TV pundit, again, in both cases being uh, rather controversial and confrontational. So just about finishes things off for today's preview video. Um, please, if you can, do click that subscribe button. Keep the subscriber numbers slowly uh, going up. Please also, uh, if you can, like the video. That does help with analytics and we'd be delighted to see some comments regarding uh, today's game, the lineup, match prediction, or any other issues you want to have a chat about. Uh, I can address those in the reply section of the comment section or talk about them in the next uh, couple of videos. Um, have a plan to do a live stream after the match um, dependent on um, circumstances um, but would hope to do that somewhere between uh, maybe half past five and six all being well lovely so thanks for listening thanks for watching um, goodbye good luck celtic in today's match against motherwell and hail hail